All right, hello, my name is Sarah Hample and I am going to be comparing two separate forms, digital drawing mediums. If you are using digital art in your field, you're automatically going to be pointed toward Photoshop. Um, however, it is very expensive. So we're gonna be comparing some other options. All right, so we're gonna get started with Krita. Um, we're gonna just start with free first. So, first of all, when you start with Krita, it's gonna pop up with this little thing that's gonna tell you about it. You're gonna just push close on that. So then, um, you have to think of every program, Photoshop, Krita, Fire Alpaca, as being like an office you're walking into. You have to get your own paper, you have to get your own pencil, so think of it like you're walking into an office and then you need to start a new thing. So you start a new object and it's going to make you choose your paper. So make them start thinking digitally. They are walking into a digital space. So they need to switch it to something they understand like inches and they have to switch both of those. And obviously now it's now down to five by four. If you think about a standard sheet of paper, that's not gonna work. So we're going to do eight by 10. If they're designing this for the web, then they might look and see what specific recommendations they have for web use. For example, in our Blackboard, if you wanted to add a picture, it has to be 200 pixels by 200 pixels. This is a great conversation point to talk about how to share and communicate online. There are rules that we need to follow that when we get in, we have to use. So eight by 10 is your standard piece of paper, but it might not be the same for digital. Then resolution, again, resolution for a picture, I would suggest for 300. However, if you're gonna be doing anything online, I would suggest 72, because 72 is usually the required amount. We're gonna assume I'm gonna print this, so I'm gonna keep it at 300. All right, now that we're getting started, I don't have to redo that for Photoshop. I am going to pretend like I'm going to be teaching a lesson about gradient. And so all of your tools are on the side right here. Isn't that nice? And then um, think of this as your toolbox and this is your adjustments for that toolbox. So I'm gonna grab a marker or pencil and I'm gonna change it here, which these little boxes look like little brushes. And there are a ton of different brushes I'm going to change the size by dragging that bar up and you can see a little example of it. Oh, that's too small. All right, that's too small. There we go. So now, and I'm gonna start just making my bottom part right here. And I'm gonna speed this up because you don't need to watch this. All right, I've done a very simple aerial perspective drawing which helps teach kids the gray scaling of a project. So I am going to save this. And I'm going to save it not as a Krita document. This is also a really great time to talk to kids about how to save your items. And I'm just gonna tr call this try one because this is the, just a try. All right, and I changed it to a JPEG, and I'm going to X out of Krita, and I'm going to open Photoshop. So when you enter Photoshop, same as Krita, you go in, you create a new file, and this is set to seven by um, five. I'm gonna switch that. When you switch, the difference between this is when you switch from inches to pixels, it uh, changes it all instead of separately and that's something students often forget and so we're gonna start that so here's my file now I'm gonna do the same thing pretty much as I did in the last 
um, in Krita. I'm going to grab my brush, and then my choices for brush, same as in Krita, are up here. Uh, if I want to change my brush, I go up to here, and it's got my different options. I use something kind of similar to this, I believe, in my last picture. So, no, it's a little more flat, but I don't think I have it direct. There we go. That's probably the closest comparison to the last one. And then my colors are over here. I can move that closer in. And if you want to change this, you have to actually go into like changing your color, but I'm just going to switch it to swatches and I'm going to use this grayscale bar right here where Krita had that triangle. So here we go. So I'm going to start a draw. Okay, so here we have our two separate images. Now remember, I tried to use a very similar brush for both of them. I tried to keep my composition relatively similar for both of these. Actually, ironically, these almost line up like they're one picture. <laughs> like two sides of one picture. There's a few things that I noticed with using both of these like immediately back to back. One of them is um, Krita was more receptive for uh, the painterly style. Uh, two, um, there was no lag. It doesn't take as much power to run Krita as it does to run Photoshop. Photoshop is a very powerful engine. However, something you should know about Photoshop, it is meant to run with photo editing and video editing and animation and everything. It's meant to do everything at once. However, if you are teaching just digital drawing, to say that Photoshop is the only thing available to you is ill. And yes, there are way more brushes that you can download for Photoshop than there is for Krita. However, for a bare bones, if you need your students to have access to the technology and actually be able to use this at home and a comparable object, I feel like Krita is a better option. To so that was my comparison uh, of the two. I hope you enjoyed.